All right, so in this video, I thought we'd talk about uh, four-wheel drive vans versus alternatives. So this is a two-wheel drive van. It's a 2004 Chevy 3500. So it's, uh, I think it's rated for 9,900 pounds, pretty much. And uh, the 2023s are the same thing. It's an extended model. This is a road trek. So this is an expensive van. You can't get them in Chevys new anymore because they were pretty in depth to make conversions so I think they switched uh, to the Pro Masters which are like front wheel drive and then they've got the uh, Mercedes Sprinters which I think you can get them in four wheel drive from road check I'm not entirely sure but anyway that would be an enormous endeavor I don't even want to think what that would cost so uh, this van here is in good shape it could it's a candidate to be converted to 4x4 the um, the more famous companies that do 4x4 van conversions won't touch used vehicles. They want them drop shipped from the factory right to them. They don't want to mess with an older van that's got broken stuff and rotted out. So they won't touch them unless they're new. However, there are companies like WeldTech that will work on uh, vans. So this van has a 6 inch lift on it. Otherwise, like I wasn't comfortable even going camping in it because you could get stuck and be rubbing on the ground. So it's got like drop knuckles on the front and then just blocks on the back and some spacers on the front. Which uh, I think that takes away from some of your top movement. So when you hit a bump, you'll top out the suspension a bit. So it's not perfectly ideal. This van is uh, popular. So it's set up so that you sleep. Uh, lengthwise with the van. The Versatiles you sleep sideways. Here's uh, the new vehicle to the fleet here. This is a 2015 Dodge Ram 3500. This is, uh, as you can see, it's a four-door. It's a uh, Cummins. It's actually weight rating is 12, 300 pounds. And then you can go even more than that. Like if you had dual rear wheels, you could go up massive weight and uh, it's got a Miranda 370 tap, cap on the back of it. So Miranda and Space Cap are both fiberglass companies out of Quebec that make enclosures for trucks. So you can do a bunch of different ops of this. You could get a generator enclosure built on it so you can open, access it from the outside so it's not dangerous to the occupants. A bunch of different things. So the thing is like the Chevy vans are just work vans. You can't get a nice van. So that would be one reason you might want to go with a truck if you care about having a leather, nice leather interior and everything. That may be the uh, route to go. This thing, just naturally looking at it, it's got a lot more uh, height available. The road trek is low because they um, drop the tanks and it's just down below and then they hide them with skirts. So if, if you were to drop 8 inch tall tanks on this uh, Dodge or Ram, you'd have a similar problem. But anyway, the uh, one thing about this truck is it's a 2015, but it's actually fairly cheap because it's got high mileage on it. So it's got 440,000 kilometers, which is like 300,000 miles or something like that. So it's kind of hard to believe, but I paid like... 10 grand for the truck and 10 for the cap. So 20 grand, you get yourself a big 4x4 truck. It's got an ASIN transmission, which is gonna last a long time. Engine's gonna last a long time. Whereas like the Chevy, it's got an LS. If you blow it up, it's not a big deal. There's LS engines for cheap all over the place. They can both do uh, dual alternators on them. This, uh, the 2004 is not a great year for dual alternator. You almost have to replace all the accessory drive to get a, a more modern accessory drive system where you could do dual alternator. This one has a generator hanging off the back of it, which uh, is a bit of a maintenance nuisance and you don't use it very much. The only reason you would need a generator is if you want to run air conditioning for extended periods of time. Anything else, the van holds its own. Alright, so I parked these vehicles so that the uh, rear bumpers are both sitting in the same spot. So when you look at them, the uh, 
base of windshield to base of windshield is pretty close. The height with the uh, six inch lift on the van makes it equivalent to the uh, 4x4 truck. If you had a two wheel drive truck it would be a bit lower. I imagine maybe quite a bit lower. So the, uh, the nose sticks out a bit further for the engine which isn't really unexpected. The uh, wheelbase on this truck you can see it's uh, maybe a, a foot further forward. The uh, the back axles are pretty much in the uh, the same spot, so the the back dragging isn't about the same. This has a, a propane tank in the back, but like uh, nowadays with batteries, I don't know if you would want propane or a generator really. So it's sort of old technology. Maybe you wouldn't go that road anymore. It's got a good heavy duty hitch. This one's got an even further heavy duty hitch on it. So like I said, the, uh, the tails are pretty much lined up. The uh, truck cap, you can see it's a bit more vertical. It's actually taller and wider than the, uh, the van. We'll look in there eventually. We'll look inside of what a, the camper should be first. It's got the air conditioner built into the roof. Whereas this one, you wouldn't do that. You'd have to put uh, the AC on top of it, I would expect, more than likely. This one doesn't have uh, the DOT lights on the back of it like the van. I'm not sure why that is. This Quebec, where these things are made, is pretty strict about things, so you would expect them to have everything they need. It's got a furnace in here. There's a spot here you could put a battery in it. And then it's got the ground effects kit to kind of make it fit. So this one used to be a three seat model. We converted it to a two seat. So we put a wardrobe here, which we don't actually use because you're not on the road long enough to really take advantage of it. But the benefit of the van is that you're in the vehicle. So uh, if you want to go in the back and lay down or whatever, you're already there, you don't need to get out and go to the back. Whereas the truck, obviously you'd have to get out and go to the back and you sh cannot drive with somebody in the back. Although they do have some of these Mirandas set up for ambulances, so I don't understand. Maybe it's just for triage and then you transport in something else. So in here, like it's fairly narrow across, like it wouldn't be any more than four feet wide. You got a little bit of storage over your windshield here. And uh, you get a wardrobe, a sink. It's about three feet wide in the middle. There's a, a toilet shower thing in here. I just uh, was doing the uh, winterizing earlier today, so that's why it's red in there. And then the bed. And yeah, so this one, you can sleep this way, whereas the Versatile, you're sleeping that way. And uh, the Versatile, we had a Dodge, and it was kind of awkward to sleep sideways. It wasn't quite wide enough, where the Miranda cap will be plenty wide, because it's hanging over the box on the other side. So there's that benefit. This one has a little AV console with some electronics in it and some storage and some movies and stuff. The uh, microwave, kind of handy. We don't cook in here. We're not professional campers. We just kind of drive, go to restaurants, and we use the van because we're disorganized and we don't know where we're gonna be the next day, pretty much, and we're cheap. We don't want to spend money on hotels. So, one-time investment and you're good to go. Has some uh, laundry. Or storage up in here, much in the fridge or not, the sink. And the most important thing in this van literally is the, the fan. You need a fantastic fan or there's other brands that make them. That's super important so that you don't overheat in the vehicle. If you don't have a fan you're gonna die pretty quick. You need the air otherwise it gets really hot and miserable. So the uh, road treks have lots of road pen or roof penetrations and they end up leaking kind of here, there, and everywhere. So that's not ideal. Even though it's a fiberglass roof, you gotta crawl up there and patch it all the time. Because the caulking gets old and water comes in. You got a little bit of a the water monitor. It tells you if your 
two uh, storage tanks and your fresh water tank are high or low, the uh, battery voltage and the propane level. It's a liquid propane, so it just has a float inside of the uh, tank. So you've got that, you got an outdoor light and then a generator control. So that's uh, kind of it. There's a bunch of storage. Although this is like a, a ski package van, so it has a big indoor water tank under here. So you, um, you fill your sewage tanks with a certain amount of antifreeze, and then you've got your holding your fresh water inside the van. So if you keep the van above freezing, you can uh, use this in the winter. So there's, you lose a lot of storage because of that big tank in here. You could get you going pretty far, I think. Like, yeah, we take water on like once a week when we're traveling in the summer and we don't try to conserve it. And then under this side, you've got some uh, electrical equipment. There's an electrical panel and a transfer switch and some stuff in there. And then there's a, a TV. So it's pretty much, I might be call it like a queen size bed across here and uh, I'm not sure what the spec is from behind the seat to the back of the van but it's going to be better than the truck because the truck is limited to about eight feet long for overlanding unless you go and buy a big slide-in camper instead of making something on your own but I guess this one this purpose of this video is you want a four by four that's not massive and you're trying to build something that's overland capable and you're thinking about do you want a van or a truck so that's sort of what you can get if you got a um, a Dodge they're unibody like the old Dodges so you're not going to do a four wheel drive conversion on that very easily it's been done but that ends up just being a huge project on its own the Chevys you can buy kits like I said from WeldTech and you can do it 4x4 and you're good to go. You're only going to be able to go 9,900 pounds though, I believe is the limit. So this guy here, it's uh, 125580 kg. So that's, uh, that's pretty cool. Take a look at the van. And like I said, I looked up the uh, vans and uh, current Chevy vans are the same as uh, this thing. So this guy here, it's uh, 9,600 pounds. Like it's not, not a lot. You've got a, a long way to go on the van, right? You got 3,000 pounds less capacity. But I will say that this van, fully outfitted, is lighter than the truck. Because it doesn't have a huge rear axle in it. Doesn't have a big four by four front axle. The benefit of the gas vehicles is there's a lot less underneath of them. Like it just has a catalytic converter in the exhaust pipe going out the back than the drive shaft. So you got more space to work with. And there's obviously a fuel tank under there as well. Whereas the, a modern Dodge Ram is going to have a huge exhaust system on it with after treatment, diesel particulate filters and everything. So it takes up a lot of space under the vehicle. We'll probably take a peek under there. With the uh, Ram, you can get a, a bigger fuel tank. Like this one's a 130 liter tank. You can get like a 200 liter tank. So you could take a, a full barrel of diesel. You can see part of the exhaust hanging down there. That keeps on going. Then there's a uh, another tank under here that holds the uh, exhaust fluid. So there's a lot going on. You're not going to put much of a uh, tank system under here. This one is outfitted with uh, some camper brackets on either end of the uh, box and it also has uh, airbags. I don't know if we can see them or not. Yeah, so this one's got airbags and they're split from side to side. So if you're too heavy on one side, you can air up the other side to kind of help you out. So if you shouldn't do that, you should balance your vehicle. But they make a, a system like that. It's got uh, bore brackets here. 
It's got a spare tire. It's uh, about it under there. So, like I was saying, the trucks, you can get them with whatever type of interior desire. That's the uh, air system, so there's a, a valve for each side for raising and lowering. It's got a brake controller. I do not like where this uh, air controller is. I gotta move it, because like uh, when you put your foot hard on the pedal, it's like that thing is pushing right on your leg. If you ever are in an accident, you'd snap your leg off. So that's just no good. So I gotta find a better spot for that thing. Um, yeah, you get, this one's got navigation. The other one has uh, an aftermarket navigation system. This is a SLT model, so it's kind of plain, but not super plain. Like it's got power doors and power locks and doesn't have a sunroof. It does have a slider on the back, which is kind of nice with the cab. So you can leave the back window open when it's raining and it's not bad, like if you're parked. It seats uh, six people. There's storage. I'm keeping all of my, um, the Ontario rules in this book, because they're kind of weird. So if you have personal use, the, uh, you don't have to get an annual sticker, and you don't need a commercial vehicle license either. So I just, I have that there in case I get pulled over and brought into the scales, I can explain the uh, situation on the vehicle because like if you're in some foreign state or province you're gonna be like what the heck are you talking about you may not know the rules so there's a seat there more storage here I've got a, a log book which I don't think I need to fill out very often but I've got just in case um, you can't get a mega cab eight foot bed so uh, if, unless you want to stretch the truck and that's uh, a whole thing if you're going to do that i got my safety triangles and then i got a fire extinguisher i got to find a better place for that i want it to be more accessible then uh, they have these uh, flat system so you can uh, fold the seats up and make a, a flat area you could put a bed in here if you wanted it's not as good as a mega cab. It's like fantastic for space, but this is decent. The mega cab also lets you uh, recline, but uh, you can do whatever you can with what you got. Um, yeah, there's the old plate. So Quebec, they're quite serious about their fiberglass caps. And so they have a couple of manufacturers there. That's why I got this thing from Quebec. It just worked out. People didn't want to touch it because of the high mileage, but it's uh, real honest miles. And I'm not too worried about it. Got running boards on it in instead of having the uh, ground effects. So that's pretty good. This is a camper jack system. So you can uh, lift this and take it out. Whereas if you have a van, or you're not lifting nothing and taking it out, it's the van. Got the uh, filler. Trucks don't have gas caps anymore, so you got to get a plug, so nothing large falls in there, and then the def goes in there. And uh, so they don't make the 370 model anymore. Just stand back to see it all. So they make a 365 with like a, a center. The doors are equal side size, and then they've so this one's a bit offset. And they also make a uh, V375, so 375 cubic feet with the uh, offset door like this. So uh, Miranda is the outfit. They will make you openings on the side. They will make you compartments accessible from the uh, inside or outside or both. And uh, this, um, it's wired into the camera in the navigation so when you back up it's instead of having a tailgate camera they just wired this guy into the tailgate camera it has a, uh, a contact there that's wired into the uh, one of the doors 
So if someone opens the back door, it shows a door ajar inside the vehicle. So if something pops open or something when you're driving, you're covered. You can get a power lock for the back here. So that's pretty cool. Then so it's got the Reiko Titan system here. So obviously the truck hits quite a bit higher than a van or some steps. You can put steps on the uh, hitch if you want. So there's three legs in various states of disrepair that are broken. So I gotta get them fixed up, otherwise I can't get this cap out of this truck. And that's a bit of a problem. So the height is pretty good in here. It's probably six feet to the uh, ribs. It has a very simple ceiling fan that is always, uh, it's just purely mechanical and it's always just kind of spinning if it's windy out. And it seems pretty good. The one thing I'll say is it's kind of wasteful with the space because uh, it has to fit over the wheel arches. Like you're not going to lift this thing up the height of the wheel arches to get it into the uh, truck. So there's a, a big void here, another big void here that uh, it would be nice if you could take advantage of it. You put your hand in there and feel around. So you, you know, I don't know how much structural integrity you can remove out of these, but like I said, you can get them with big cutouts on the sides and you lift them. If you don't have a jack system, use a forklift and grab onto it with long forks and you can lift them up and out. There's a big overhang above the cab of the truck. Um, you could probably have a small human sleeping up there. This thing has got some kind of uh, system here for storing a ladder. You can put a 10 foot ladder in here but it's about eight feet on the base of it. Um, I think it's pretty spacious, like the, if you just put stuff on one side. If you put a, a toilet in here, it would be, you'd probably just use a curtain or something if you didn't want to go crazy into outfitting it. Otherwise, uh, I think Miranda will fiberglass up whatever you want within reason inside of these things you just have to pay that's uh, the way life works but they're, they're pretty accommodating for doing custom stuff because every one of these is custom for somebody um, yeah with the Ryko Titan system it's got like a, a remote so you get the um, four jacks kind of touching the ground at the same time using an individual controller and then you start lifting it up uh, completely from the top or off of the truck once they're all in position. So that's pretty neat. Like I said, but they sell a lot of parts to fix these things, so they can't be perfect by any means, but uh, you need that to get the thing in and out. And then the guy made some big J hooks so that you can carry lumber on the side when these aren't in play. So I let you carry a 16 foot board on the side of the truck with these big J hooks. There's a battery here. Miranda does do a um, heater system plumbed into the truck. If you want to do that, it's just like a, a school bus fan coil contraption. They're, sure, it's fine. Just have to have the truck warm in order to get warm coolant, obviously. There's some more of the uh, Ryko Titan stuff tucked up in here and that's quite expensive that's like a uh, three thousand dollars or more for that system and then the cap is like ten grand so you're you got to get the truck cheap or get the stuff used or whatever you can do you can do murals on the side of the truck if you want to kind of conceal what you are So you can see where the uh, legs grab onto it. Allows you to, like I said, carry lumber on the side if you want to. And uh, I think that's uh, about it. There's no real need to look at the engine. It's just a standard truck with the Cummins in it. I 
just to give you an idea as an option. If you want to go 4x4 four four on a budget, then I would say a van is not the way to go. Is that it's a lot of money. <laughs> it's like 20 grand for the uh, to do a 4x4 four four conversion. So it's just not going to happen with this van. And then you, you'll beat it up too much too. They're not meant to be on an off-road situation. You could drive them out to Alaska and it's it's hard on them, but you're not supposed to like take them on trails and stuff like that. So if you were to go put 4x4 on this and try and take it down trails, I think you would probably kill it. Whereas the truck, it's got, like I said, 300,000 miles on it. it. Hasn't broken the frame in half. Some of them will snap, <laughs> unfortunately. And they snap the frame right about there. But I do have a... Uh, a crack in the box right here so the weight is kind of uh, taking its toll on here I would have been better if the weight was more here I don't know why uh, they didn't slide it in further it's probably to get the doors to work I don't know it seems to me like they probably would have done themselves a, a favor having this nudged up a bit further, but there's got to be a reason why they didn't take it any further than that, but yeah, that's something I got to watch out for. Let's take a look on the other side and see if the bed's cracked over there or not. Now we're all good there. Dragged the truck on something at some point. So, um, yeah, what else was I thinking? For aftermarket parts, you're way better off with the truck. You can get stainless steel brake lines and anything you want, lift kits, if you want to go way high and get way bigger tires. Whereas there's a limit with the, uh, the van. So WeldTech Designs is probably your best bet for getting stuff as far as that goes. Um, and that's... Uh, about it. This is just a much heavier duty vehicle. You could buy a, a fiberglass slide in that's all fully kitted for you if you want, or you can just go and buy an old work truck and do what you want with it, or you can get a, a road truck to stay on the asphalt. So, anyway, thanks for watching.